So then yesterday, a video came up, and it was published by the NDC. In fact, the NDC held a press conference about this yesterday. In the video, you find people, um, including the president, Dana Dodanko Akufado, in his home, and Ambassador Jebewa, and a lady, and there's a conversation. Now, the NDC put this video across in support of their claim of corruption against the president. They're entitled to claim that. But the evidence that they adduced was this video. Okay, so eventually, the laptop of the author of the video has been collected. It was actually been seized. And surprisingly, on the laptop is another video, really the same video. The allegation here is that the video that came out first was doctored. Our responsibility and purpose for you tonight as media is to show you portions of both video, show you the parts where the videos are different, and then we can isolate the areas that have been added or have been subtracted. You'll see it yourself because this is video. As they say, you can see it's feely, feely in black and white. And then after that, I'll make, I'll make a little bit of a statement about these kinds of things. So on the screen that you see uh, to my right, and that is to the left of your screen, is the video that the NDC have used for their press conference. Let's call it video A. And then behind me here is the other video, uh, which is the original that was obtained from the laptop of the recorder. That is the person who recorded. We call that video B. And it's really the same thing, except that there are few changes, and we will show you the changes. And then you can make it, you can make it up uh, yourself. So let's start watching uh, video one. How both videos start the same way. Now, what we are trying to resolve is, what was this meeting about? On one side, the NDC says, this meeting was about a gentleman who works at the um, urban roads, at the Ministry of Roads, and that when President Akufuado became president, this gentleman was worried that apparatchiks of the NPP were asking for his removal. And so, he sent his wife to go see the president and hand over the president, the sworn-in president of Ghana, to be handed over 40,000 United States dollars so that he may keep his job. That's, that's on the one hand. Now, the evidence obtained from the laptop of the recorder indicates something else. It indicates that this conversation was had before President Akufado became president, and whatever donation was given was a donation towards his campaign of 2016. We're going to juxtapose the two together, and then you can make your own decision, but we'll show you which parts have been, have been changed. I was totally shocked when I saw this. I mean, I didn't know that this can happen in Ghana. I didn't know this can happen at the highest level of political debate. I didn't know this can happen at the highest level of, uh, of the nobility of seeking political office in Ghana. After how many elections, eight elections, 20-something years of democracy, this happens in uh, the last days of campaign, and a press conference is conducted by a leading political party purporting a video to be correct. I don't know whether they did analyze it. So that's the video over there. All the way, you can see it on my other video wall. Uh, forget about the candidates for now. Let's show, let's see how that video starts. Have a look. Let's go. So the video starts and um, you can hear the voices, people walking in. So they are in, introduced, as Asensu comes into the office, and this is said to be when they were in power. So they are introduced and they are walking into the president's study in his home at Nima, where he, where he lived, where he has always lived. Uh, they walk into the office and um, they take their seats. So they are welcome into the office. And uh, some of you watching me have been into this office before. Some of you journalists have interviewed the president in this office before. So they sit down and uh, pleasantries are exchanged. Let's listen. Or you may not be a Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay, so you saw that. So they explained why they are there. Now, the first distinctions that we're going to show to you is that in the video that we're going to play, you will find that the persons came to the first president for two reasons. One, to make a donation to his campaign 2016, and the donation was in the form of cash and T-shirts. Regrettably, the issue of T-shirts is excluded from the other video, totally excluded, but we have hardcore evidence obtained from the laptop of the recorder that they actually brought in T-shirts. We will show that to you, and that will shock you. Okay, so let's play the video here. This, then, is the one that is obtained from the laptop of the recorder. It starts the same way. Let's have a look. All right, so you heard there that they talk about T-shirts and money, that they're going to be given T-shirts and money. Then you also heard the president ask um, about where the person works, because the lady is introduced as the wife of the man at Urban Rose. The president is asking, is Urban Rose Ministry of Transport? He's confirming. Is it Ministry of Transport? Actually, it's not Ministry of Transport, it's Ministry of Roads. That is the first indication for anyone to suspect, or that's the second indication for anyone to suspect that the man speaking is not president of Ghana. He's probably campaigning for office. If you are president of Ghana, you will know that uh, Urban Rose is Ministry of Roads because he would have appointed a Rose minister he would have discussed with you who he wants to make in charge of urban roads. It's a high-profile position. He would have discussed with you. In fact, most likely the president will know him. So when you hear the president ask that question, uh, is, it, is it Ministry of Transport? He's sort of writing it down. Let's bring that back. Let's bring that back. Have a look. So you heard the president ask the question, is that a ministry of transport? So he asked the question. Before then, you heard them say they are there for two things, to give t-shirts and to give money. 
Now, in the other video that is on the screen, which is what has been shown, which was what was applied at the NDC press conference, in that video over there, there is actually no mention of T-shirts. There's, there's no mention of T-shirts at all, and there's no showing of the T-shirts. Now, the most important part of the video, the two videos, the most distinguishing part of the two videos, is when the recorder goes out to go and bring a sample of the T-shirts that they have promised the president. The president asked the question, at that time he wasn't president, of course, uh, the, N the MPP candidate, Nana Kufado, asked the question, and you brought me T-shirts as well. And they say, yes, we brought 1,000 T-shirts. Have a listen to this. Have a listen. This is the original video. This is not the one the NDC made a press conference about. This is the other one. Have a listen. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> and the T-shirts. Uh, thousand T-shirts. Uh, uh, oh, fantastic. <laughs> and the T-shirts. Uh, thousand T-shirts. Uh, uh, now, is that not abundant sufficient evidence? that this conversation occurred before the man became president. He says that, and you are bringing me t-shirts. And they said, yes. How many t-shirts? He says, 1,000 t-shirts. You heard that. He said, 1,000 t-shirts. Why are you going to give a president who has been sworn in t-shirts in his home? Now, th so this conversation occurred after the man has been sworn in as president and is occurring in his home. I believe that even before the swearing in, President Mahama had taken President Akufado around the Jubilee House. They had taken photographs and all of that. And that they were very accustomed to the Jubilee House. Straight from the swearing in, President Akufado started using the Jubilee House. We know that President Kufo and others had used other places, but straight from 7 January 2017, he started using the Jubilee House. So if this conversation had occurred when he was president, it will occur in the Jubilee House. And why will a presidential conversation occur uh, in Jubilee House after he's been sworn in? And he's talking about 1,000 t-shirts. This could be the most ridiculous of all political attempts to bring down a political opponent. It could be the most dastardly and the most ridiculous ever to have happened in the Fourth Republic. And it's painful that it's happening not in 1992, not in 1996, not in the year 2000. 20 years after the year 2000, technology has come. WhatsApp, Facebook, editing machines, everything. People can just look at a video and determine that it's been edited. 20 years after the turn of the century, Ghanaian politicians are taking us back to 1951, to communist inferior tactics, which was practiced during the Second World War. The Second World War ended in 1945. That is when they practiced communist inferior tactics. 1945, we stopped practicing communist inferior tactics. From the 1960s, American politics started going on television. From the 1970s, Ghana had television. From the year 2000, we have been seeing policy on television. From 2016, we have had a social media election. How many years from communist inferior tactics will a leading political party take us back to present a video with such ridicule and call it a, an evidence of corruption? Any politician can be corrupt, and we like to see the evidence of corruption because we don't want corrupt politicians. But is that the way to do it, to use something like that? I, I, I'm, I'm shocked. But you're going to see it. You will be shocked too. Okay. So now let's go to the part of the video where the conversation is on the T-shirt and the recorder of the video, you know what he does? He says, can I go, he, he offers himself, he says, can I go to the car to bring you a copy of the T-shirt? Let's have a look at that. It will shock you. Have a look. What is it? That's me. Uh, the T-shirt. Oh, yeah, you and Baumia. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, should I go and bring two samples? I thought so that you see the samples.
If you wear, and then you sweat, there's holes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. They are on the cocoa board. Uh, they are mm. the So you saw that. Wow. Did you say wow? I said wow. I don't know whether the um, leadership of the party, the NDC, have seen this one. But this is video. I didn't create it. This is video, and you see portions of it where the face of the guy shows a little bit because it shows in the screen of the car and all of that. You see that? So this is it. It was about T-shirts and a donation. And sometime in the video, even the one the NDC shows, the MPP candidate writes down the name of the person who is donating. He says, what name should I put to it? And now they have linked this to the um, Urban Roads uh, guy who is still in office one way or the other. I don't know. He's still there. And they've linked it to the fact that he paid his way to be there and therefore the president or the candidate at that time or the president is corrupt. I mean, how, how can you really do that? This, I mean, no one should forgive any politician who does that. They cannot be forgiven. How can they be forgiven? How can you be forgiven for leading 17 million voters? You are aiming to lead 17 million voters to elect you as president and elect your member of parliament as member of parliament and you are leading us to the conclusion that your opponent is corrupt. And to do that, you bring this kind of evidence? Apart from being, it being evil, I mean, it is quite crass. I'm sorry to say. It is very, very crass that you are leading 17 million people to vote one way against, in favor of you, and you are telling us that the opponent is corrupt. You should tell us when your opponent is corrupt. You should. By all means, you should. But should you do it this way? This is evil. That is, doesn't make any sense. And it's taking our country back. We don't want this kind of politics. Let's play the politics. Accuse each other based on evidence. Show us. Politics is a competition of ideas. It is only the communist inferior tactics politics. That's not a competition of ideas. The youth want work to do. The youth want education. The youth want jobs. They want to know the record of the party that is coming in power if they have been in power before. They need to know the record. That's what you should tell us. Four days to election. But you come and tell us that, oh, the guy is corrupt and he took money. He's very, very corrupt. When he was president, somebody bribed him. And the evidence you provide is this kind of evidence. I'm sure the National Media Commission will have something to say about it. Okay. So you have seen the, you have seen the t shirts bit. You've seen it. Uh, let's now look at one last part before I bring in the expert. So you're going to see that in the video... The, uh, in the first, the, the one the NDC used. The MPP candidate is addressed by the recorder as Nana. That's what he says. He said, Nana, you remember that I came to you uh, some time ago in the company of Amabuzia. I showed you some videos trying to introduce himself. The lady says that uh, this man led me here. So he says, Nana. Then in the doctored one, he still says Nana. Then in the next paragraph, he says, Your Excellency. So the voiceover at the back, it says Nana. Then it says, Your Excellency. So the original one is Nana, there's no Your Excellency, because at that time he wasn't Your Excellency. He was campaigning. It's sometime in August. He says, Nana, and then he adds Your Excellency. That's terrible. That's really, it wasn't even a, that, it wasn't a good job. I mean, we all do editing. It was a very terrible job, very, very bad. But when you are doing evil and you are with the devil, you will do a terrible job. Because evil will never triumph over good. Evil, it can never, ever triumph over good. Not in Ghana, not in Nigeria, not in the hemisphere, not on the equator. Evil will never, ever triumph over good. So you will make mistakes like that and make a fool of yourself. That's what has happened. You make mistakes and you make a fool of yourself because you are perpetrating evil and it cannot triumph over good. Good will always triumph over evil. Go ahead and read Revelation chapter 4. You will see that good will always triumph over evil. Okay, now listen to, the, listen to that. Listen to the Nana part and you will see it. 
excited. I don't even know what to say. If I tell me, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. 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 And the pay a buyer a chronobonia, a larger bus, and since some year and tinay now. A month for Hana, see a in your office room, nor your politics, and so see on your politics on office, or a civil servant. Yeah, I don't know. Eh mse emrebi nini eh datana kanal da moa yes ya o eh mama buri afi a mi tro videos bia o mo trele ha military for ha since then no eh ya mse workload na sunt na se mi wenti o bo mama ni se de ya o mo bo na dia de no en me dru un se mo na mi se no e un ko mama ho en ko bo na mama Ebia, don't say or we bia no. I must say Ebia propose us be or we nimna di adina nyaman kiti kiti bia. He say person mo sube boa. Ah, ubo ya mania. Then say be sum. Na mo aka kra ya beti adia boa no. Na ya boa. There's another part of the video I didn't talk about. Maybe we can just look at it. You see, so where the president says we don't need to see the video. We just see the the Ghana web story. He said uh, this brother is pimped now because the person's photograph was in the president's office uh, as candidate in his house in Nima. The photograph was there. And then it was said that uh, um, the president said the one who has just become pimped now. Have a look at this Ghana web story and when the pimped now was made. This is August 2016, quite clearly. August 2016, the election had not even occurred. So how is anybody going to say that? There's also been concerns and stories about Angela Merkel's photograph in the president's office in the video. But in that Angela Merkel photograph, there's another person. I'm sorry to remind his family and his party and his friends like me of pain. Jacob Echebelamte, our late fallen comrade, Jacob Echebelamte, is also in the video. When did Jacob Echebelamte pass? Mm. Obechebelamte is standing there in the video with Angela Merkel, in the photograph. President Akufado, Angela Merkel, the German Chancellor, and Jacob Echebelamte in the video. And that is indicative of a time when Akufado had been sworn in as president. You see, I've been saying for a very long time, viewers. The journalism is not about hiding camera and catching people, you know. Today, there's been a major Supreme Court decision. I'll deal with it tomorrow. The Supreme Court has ruled something about Dom Level. I will come and deal with it tomorrow because I want to access the ruling of the court and the reason that was given by the Apex Court and what they said about the investigations that were conducted by Dom Level. Wait for that tomorrow, 9 o'clock. It's coming. Major. Major, major, Domelevo on trial. Tomorrow, that's coming because today, the Supreme Court has ruled. And I've been saying all the time, journalism is not macho, macho, ma recordo, irrecordable, macho, me the camera see or No, journalism is an intellectual exercise. It is an intellectual exercise. You know the kind of things we do here. We've been doing it for a long time. We have never been sued. Whilst we say that to the glory of God, it is also part of the hard work we do. So you can say anything about the work we do. I mean, when we do these works, it goes against some party or the other. Sometimes the party people are unhappy. We are sorry about that if you're unhappy. But we have to do the work. So when we put President Akufado's response here against Martin Amidu, and we say to Martin Amidu that you have violated all the time pattern, there's nothing he can say. We, have, we do hard work and we put it out in such a way that there's nothing you can say about our work. If you are a journalist... Make sure that when you put out your work, controversial as it may be, no one should be able to hold a candle to it and say that what you've done is intellectually wrong or that what you've done lacks research. You should, that should never happen to you as a journalist. I'm talking to everybody who wants to be a journalist. That should never happen. So when we put stuff up here, the people go on social media and they talk, stomach journalist, and you're a foolish boy, and <laughs> go and pass your law school exam. You can say all that, but you can't say that the work was wrong can't say that. Nobody can say the work we've done is wrong. All the editorials we have done, no one can say that the work is wrong because we do hard research work and we bring you the intellectual sophistication of our presentation. 
That's what journalism is about. It's not about, I had a camera in my pocket, and I, so when you were talking, I, I recorded it, so come and pay me 500 CDs, otherwise I will put the recording on Ghana web. That's crass. That's foolishness. Don't do that kind of journalism. Get the journalism right. Put out information. It may go against some people, of course. If we analyze certain things, it goes against people all the time. We know that. But we put out information that is correct. I thank you.